Hi, we're Quaint and Curious Volumes. My name is James, and it's Friday, so I'm going to talk about what I've read this week. It's a Friday Reads report. Um, I've continued my read-through of Marcel Proust and Guillermo Montway, third volume of um, In Search of Lost Time. Um, so in the last, uh, well, 150 pages or so that I've read this week, um, our narrator, Marcel, has... Um, uh, He's, I think he's returned to Paris, and, um, well, he's met Robert saint um, uh mistress, who turns out to be Rachel, when of the Lord, a strange name, um, actually, it's just Rachel, and she is a, an actress-slash-prostitute that uh, the narrator met in a previous volume when she was working um, at a house of ill repute. Um, she seems to be considered not a terribly great actress and also kind of um, mean, not only to Robert de Saint-Loup, who she sort of humiliates by staring at and flirting with other men in front of him, but also um, to another actress, a fledgling actress, who she uh, humiliates with the cooperation of some other um, actors and actresses, um, while this uh, this uh, this young woman is is uh, performing on stage, she uh, gets people to uh, laugh at her and behave in other uh, disruptive ways, so as to throw her off and have her leave the stage early. Anyway, it's kind of a harrowing scene. Um, there is also um, a gathering at the home of Madame de Villeparisi, which goes on for quite some time. Uh, it's I'm still in the midst of it. Uh, but a lot of people show up. Uh, Saint Loup comes back. Um, Madame de Guerbant uh, is there, um, which uh, which has our narrator very nervous, uh, of course, because he. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the um, the Dreyfus affair, um, and uh, most of the people here are uh, anti Dreyfusards, which is to say they believe that uh, Captain Dreyfus imprisoned on Devil's Island is guilty of treason. Um, there are anti-Dreyfusards such as uh, San Loup, um, uh, who is uh, who thinks he's innocent. There's some discussion of the latest uh, developments in this case, um, but generally people who are, are um, anti-Dreyfusards, that is, those who find Dreyfus, who think Captain Dreyfus is guilty of treason, uh, it's wrapped up in a lot of um, just sort of general anti-Semitism. And there's quite a bit of that in here. Um, but uh, let, let's get to the, the good parts of this gathering for a moment, um, uh, where uh, San Loup comes in and uh, and he introduces... Uh, uh, well, does he? Let's see. Um, saint Loup talks to his aunt, who is Madame de Guermante, the duchess whom, uh, in the previous week, I told you, our narrator was going out on the street to try and be seen by. Um, and uh, so he's, uh, he's left at a certain point, uh, standing next to this, uh, this duchess. And, um, they talked for a moment, doubtless about me, for, uh, for as saint Loup was leaving to join his mother, Madame de Guermont turned to me. Good evening. How are you? was her greeting. She showered me with the light of her azure gaze, hesitated for a moment, unfolded and stretched towards me the stem of her arm, and leaned forward her body, which sprang rapidly backwards like a bush, that had been pulled down to the ground and on being released returns to its natural position. Thus she acted under the fire of St. Lube's eyes, which kept her under observation from a distance and made frantic efforts to obtain some further concession still, uh, still from his aunt. Fearing that our conversation might dry up altogether, he came across to fuel it and answered for me. He's not very well just now. He gets rather tired. I think he would be a great deal better, by the way, if he saw you more often, for I don't mind telling you that he enjoys seeing you very much. 
Oh, but that's very nice of him, said Madame de Guermont in a deliberately trite tone, as if I had brought, brought, off her, brought her her coat. I'm most flattered. Look, I must go talk to my mother for a minute. Take my chair, said St. Loup, uh, forcing me to sit down next to his aunt. We were both silent. <laughs> this guy. Um, I catch sight of you sometimes in the morning, she said, as though she were giving me a piece of news, and as though I, for my part, never saw her. It's so good for one, a walk. <laughs> So this guy, is, his whole life has revolved around going out, hoping to be seen by this old lady. And, and then he encounters at, her at this salon and she's like, you know, I see you sometimes. <laughs> it's good to walk. It is. It is good for one to walk. Right, Louise? When Louise was younger, I would have to, I would have to spell that word because she would, you know, get very excited. She does not hear as well as she used to, as I've, I've said before, but... You know, she's also, she's also slowed down a fair bit. She still does like to go for a walk. Um, yeah, then the, uh, the German prime minister comes and visits. This is some party. Um, of course, it's, uh, it's, uh, he's described as, oh, he's anti-Semitism personified. Oh, this guy's an anti-Semite. All the other anti-Semites are like, this guy is pretty freaking anti-Semitic. So, yeah, um, and then uh, there's talk about trying to get elected to the Academy. We're starting to get hints that um, Odette or Madame Swan has arrived at the, at, the, uh, at the gathering, so that's going to throw some, some waves into this little dra drawing room drama. I'll let you know about it next week. But, yes, uh, big news in the, in, the, uh, in, in the world of our unnamed narrator. Um, confirmation that the Duchess de Guermont sees him when she's out walking. Okay, um, what else? I also read a short novel um, called Swimming Home by uh, Deborah Levy, or Levy. Um, this was, uh, I think it was a Booker nominee at some point. It's, uh, it's, a, sh it's a short story about, or a short novel, about a group of people on vacation in the south of France. I think most of them are English. Um, they include a, a poet um, named Joe, uh, his wife Isabel, who is a war correspondent, and their two friends, a married couple who own a store that's failing and they're in a lot of debt, but that the husband of that marriage likes to collect weapons, including some antique revolvers. Um, and uh, he's also a gourmand, so he likes to cook a lot of fancy food for them. So anyway, these four uh, English people are on vacation in the south of France, um, and they've rented a villa. Uh, they are getting there, they're arriving, and they find uh, someone floating in the pool. It looks like she's dead and also naked. Turns out she's alive and also... Um, clinically insane and off her medication. But they, for some reason, invite her to stay in their spare room. It is Isabel, the wife of the poet. Um, by the way, this, this poet, I say he's a poet, right? Most people, you know, who say they're poets, they're, they have a job, right? You know, because people aren't buying poetry. I'm going to talk more about that in a bit. Um, but he's um, apparently in the world of this novel, which is set in the 21st century, um, you know, he's a famous poet, and he, he has fans, and he goes around touring and giving talks and things. So he makes his living off this, and he has a house in London from it. I don't, I don't know. Um, but so the, uh, the young woman who is uh, in the pool is, turns out to be not just a, um, a, a slightly exhibitionistic um, off her meds um, person, she's also a botanist, and an ardent fan of the poet's writing. And she has written a poem herself called Swimming Home, which she wants his thoughts on. Uh, this had, for me, it, it, was kind of, and it wasn't entirely a satisfying read. Um, there's so many characters in it. In addition to the four vacationers and the madwoman, uh, there is uh, Joseph and Isabel's daughter, Nina, 
Uh, there is like the caretaker of the summer house, uh, Jürgen, um, and there is a, an, an elderly retired physician who lives next door. Too many characters, not enough time really given to any of them. So uh, they're, they're kind of unsatisfyingly brought together and, and it's sort of un, uh, mysteriously wrapped up what happens in the end. I'm not going to spoil, but it, we don't really get a sense of why. What happens, happens. Um, some things you're like, I bet this is going to happen, and it happens. But some things it's like, why did that happen? I, I, did, I didn't get a sense of any particular reason for why that happened. Uh, I I guess maybe if this was a 300-page novel and we got more development of these characters, uh, it would have seemed more successful to me. Uh, still, you know, it, it was all, it was all right. I would read something else by Deborah Levy. Having read that, I'd give it a try. Um, so, uh, what else? I'm still making my way very slowly through Arthur Ashe, A Life. This is kind of my side read. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm listening to Steve Donahue's uh, read-through of Pride and Prejudice and uh, reading along on my own copy. Uh, so that's a chapter a day. So this is going to... That might take a little while to get through, probably two months, if um, if we do a chapter a day. We, me and my friend Steve, if we read a chapter a day, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I may skip it. I may um, go off ahead after a certain point. But his uh, his reading of it is is delightful, and you should check it out. Um, some other uh, news in uh, the bookish world this week is that. The New York Times, who I talked about a, a while ago, were putting out this weird um, search feature of their best books. They, this week, um, created a list of the 100 uh, best books of the 21st century so far. Um, and uh, it was compiled from um, surveys sent out to mostly famous authors, but also Jenna, Jenna Bush Hagar, daughter of our second worst president, and, um, and, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. I don't, I don't know the, the literary expertise of these people, uh, but there you go. Um, but also famous writers, um, including Stephen King. In a kind of a, a side article yesterday, they printed the the top, the 10 choices. So I guess they sent out forms and said, give us ten, your 10 picks, right? And Stephen King uh, said, yeah, you, you can print my personal one. So they, they printed several writers' personal um, 10 picks. Um, and Stephen King <laughs> was the only one who named one of his own books um, for the, the best books of the 21st century. So uh, it was under the dome, if that makes a difference to you. Um, and so I look, Stephen. You know I, I know you watch the channel. I know I I have it on good authority. Stephen King watches me, David Novak, and uh, Jack Edwards. It's a weird group of channels to watch. I admit it. But look, Steve, you you've got everything a writer needs. You don't need to you know put your thumb on the scale like that. Um, but uh, yeah, just be gracious. You've got. I think you're doing pretty well. You got some money. Uh you you've got a house just for your books. I saw it in the in the post. Um but anyway. <laughs> I found the list pretty interesting. Stephen King uh, ultimately did not make this list of 100. I'm going to put a link in my description and um it's uh it should allow you to get it even if you are not uh, subscribed to the Times. So, um, was, what was interesting? Some of the things that were not, there were no um, titles by uh, no Murakami, no Knausgaard, no Pynchon. Interesting. No Rushdie, no Colm Tobin. Uh, Solenoid wasn't on it. There was uh, only one Cormac McCarthy, but I, most of his stuff was before the turn of the 21st century. Um, and I also I compared it to uh, the uh, Nobel Prize winners of the 21st century. Most of them were not on there. Uh, Abdul Razak Gurna, 
uh, not on there from from last year. Certainly uh, a, a, a great novelist. Um, Louise Glick, not on there. I think if this was made a couple of years earlier, she definitely would have been on there. Olga Togarczyk, not on the list. Uh, Books of Jacob, which was uh, explicitly cited in her Nobel Prize, um, was published in 2014. Um, and in English uh, just two years ago, I think, two or three. Uh, Peter Hanke, uh, Modiano, Transtromer, Hertha Mueller, Leclesio, uh, Va uh, Mario Vargas Llosa, Mo Yan, not on the list. Uh, Bob Dylan, obviously not on the list. Uh, Doris Lessing, um, nope. Orhan Pamuk, if this was from 10 years earlier, Definitely Orhan Pamuk's Snow would be on there, probably. Harold Pinter, not on the list, but he didn't do much in the 21st century. Um, Elfrida Yelinke didn't belong on the list. Um, J.M. Kutsia, I was really surprised that nothing by him was on this list. Um, and then Imre Kurtes and uh, V.S. Naipaul, not so surprised that they're not on the list. Who is on this list? Okay, because we're talking about the overlap between Nobel Prize winners and the, the Times 100 best. Um, Annie knows the years, Jan Voss's Septology, um, Alice Munro, boo -hoo, um, and Svetlana Alexeyevich um, were the only 21st century Nobel Prize winners also on this list. So I really don't, I don't get Annie Arno. Um, I didn't read the book that was, was listed. Um, I, I read two others. I, I didn't, I don't get them. I don't, I don't understand why this is, 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 is good or is literature. Um, Jan Fossa, I haven't read yet. I have a copy, um, but, uh, the septology is like a 700 page novel with, uh, I think one sentence and two characters who both have the same name. So that is certainly challenging, um, but I, I, I haven't, haven't read it. Uh, Toni Morrison's on the list. She won the Nobel Prize in the 20th century. She also, most would say, did her best writing in the 20th century. The, the book A Mercy was published in the 20, uh, 21st, and um, haven't read it. I don't think it's considered one of her best, but there you go. Um, and, uh, okay, so here's something interesting. There are more graphic memoirs than books of poetry. So this is the, the 100 best books, not just novels. Um, so there's also history, biography, not a lot. But um, there's more graphic novels than poetry. There are two graphic novels, um, uh, Persepolis and Fun Home, both good reads, uh, I would say. Um, and one book of poetry, Citizen, by Claudine Rankin. I'm not familiar with this book. I'd like to read it now. Um, so uh, there you go. So some writers got more than one. Uh, I noticed Hilary Mantel and Zadie Smith and Jessamyn Ward at, had, had three. So there you go. The top book was a bit of a surprise to me. Um, I haven't read it. I haven't read most of these. I've read 20 of, of the 100. Um, the top book was My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. And uh, the number two was The Warmth of Other Suns by uh, Wilkerson, uh, his History of the Great Migration. So, you know, I don't, any list like this is going to get, pe is made to get people like me talking about and thinking about and saying, well, what about and why is, you know, but it's really interesting what it is, is some of these people who are not on it. I would have been, uh, I would have bet money that uh, Murakami or Knausgaard would would have been on here, uh, and I'm not a fan of either of them. But uh, you know, but there you go. Uh, then um, I, you, you can so you can go and you can look, and there's little check boxes so you can check how many you've read and which ones you want to read. I want to read all of them. All of them. You know, I want to read the other eighty. They they you know at least to know are they are they any good. But I've got other stuff going on. I, this is this is quaint and curious volumes. This is not um, the books that everyone's read, uh, and the, the the 
New York Times approved best books, but they do they sound pretty good. I don't know. So let me know. Go go follow that link. Click tick the little boxes. It's very satisfying to tick those boxes. I think we can all agree. And and let me know in the comments how many you've read of the hundred and and what do you think should have been on? In the comments section, you know they say don't read the comments. I read the comments section or you know some of it. And um there's a, a, a one fellow who is one of the top comments, you'll see it, um, who uh, a couple of days ago, he predicted what the top 20 were. He was right, except for maybe five. He was really close. Um, so that was, that was pretty impressive. Um, I don't know if it's impressive, but I guess if you read the Times book section a lot, which I don't, you would have a sense. Um, and 100 years ago, or 110 years ago in, in September... 2015, uh, the Times did another article of the uh, the top novels in the English language. So it's it's similar. Well, I guess some of these are translated, um, but they uh, sent a survey out to uh, 28 um, of 28 well-known authors, um, and and I I could read this list of authors to you. You, you haven't heard of any of them, except for Booth Tarkington. Uh, you, you might have. Um, or Oliver Onions, um, which I think was one of uh, Steve Donahue's pen names back in the day. Uh, but so the, the, top, the top novels that were selected, Vanity Fair tops the list. Tom Jones is, is second. Um, so uh, people, would, Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. Uh, and then David Copperfield uh, by Charles Dickens, then The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, and then in a four-way tie, uh, Robinson Crusoe. Uh, oh, wait, no, Crusoe is next. The four-way tie is Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott, Lorna Dune by R.D. Blackmore, Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy, and Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern. Um, so there you go. Those are, are the best... Now, Lorna Dune, you know, finally getting... I haven't read Lorna Dune. Have you read Lorna Dune? Does anyone read that anymore? Some of these. Um, then after that, it you know, these are things if you're a reader, you know, you, you may have heard of. But, um, you know, The Cloister and the Hearth and uh, Henry Esmond um, by Thackeray. Uh, you know, I know Tha uh, Thackeray, obviously. Vanity Fair, but Henry Esmond, do not know that. Um, it, some of the the uh, less popular ones uh, are better known today. So what, one of the ones that is mentioned but only got one vote is Anna Karenina. Well, how about that? Um, uh, I don't think War and Peace is even on this list. Um, there's a... Yeah, so this is... Probably as interesting a list as the as the hundred, but um, it's a it's a bunch of people you haven't heard of. This uh, portrait here is one of the well known authors who contributed to the survey. Um, of course, you recognize the uh, the indelible uh, Gertrude Atherton. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to tell you about that. Um, I'm going to keep on with Garamont Way probably take me another two weeks to finish it so uh, these are going to be rather slow moving um, Friday reads for me for a little bit but uh, that's what you get you're welcome to go and, and watch Jack Edwards if you want I don't I don't know um, I don't think he has a dog okay uh, that's all I have for today you want to see Louise a bit hey Louise Thanks for watching.